Welcome to the dementia-friendly Prince George's County, Maryland Northern Sector webinar series for caregivers. Today's topic is Medicare Plans, Supplement Advantage, and Savings Plans presented by Mark Gottlieb, sponsored by the Prince George's County Government and the Department of Family Services. Yes, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining me this evening. I hope many of you were available and joined in the first part of this webinar last week talking about Medicare Parts A, B, and D. Uh, this again is Mark Gottlieb. I'm an insurance professional in the area, uh, offer a lot of different types of products and also increasingly involved in Medicare as I run into more and more people who have questions and needs to try and figure out all of this information. It's especially relevant right now because we are about uh, six days away or so from the annual enrollment period, which starts on October 15th, which allows people to sign up for Medicare Advantage plans and prescription drug plans. And as such, you're probably seeing a lot of advertisements on television right now and probably receiving a lot of mailed material, so much so that it gets a little overwhelming. And that, of course, is why uh, we and Dreambelt, along with myself, decided to do these educational presentations to help people make these types of decisions. I'm um, different than the state health insurance program, which is federally and state funded and designed to be educational in nature. I am different in that I am out in the battlefront, so to speak, dealing with all of these different questions dealing with all of these different products. So I'm able to have a, a big picture, real world view of everything that's available to you. Uh, that said, then tonight we will move into the second part of the presentation. Uh, the last slide from part one talked about, okay, now that you've seen what A, B, and D are, what are the gaps you may be facing, even if you have A, B, and D? And certainly one of the main gaps is the 20% copay, uh, which a person is responsible for if they have Medicare Part B, which only pays 80%. And we went through some of the details about Part B last week. And uh, so we're going to look at the way of trying to fill some of those gaps. Uh, so really, there's several ways to fill those gaps. There are Medicare supplements, Medicare Advantage plans, which again, you're seeing a lot of advertisements about, Medicare savings plans. It's also something called hospital indemnity plans, which we'll talk about towards the end of the presentation. So I'm going to get started by talking about Medicare Advantage plans, since, as I say, we're coming up on the annual enrollment. Uh, time period. Medicare Advantage plan actually replaces Medicare A and B, which are also referred to as original Medicare. So in effect, you have your A and B and you're signing it over to the insurer or the uh, health entity, which is going to provide the Medicare Advantage coverage. So you're now relying on them. They're going to bill Medicare AMD for all the services provided, and then offer additional services and programs to you. Those might include dental, vision, and hearing, and there are other services as well, which I'll get into a few slides down the road. Uh, Medicare Advantage plans may be offered with or without Part D prescription drug plan, but by and large in this area, they are offered with the prescription drug incorporated. Therefore, they're known as MAPD plans, Medicare Advantage Prescription Drug. Again, you must have parts A and B. You, know, you can't think that, hey, once I join an, an Advantage plan, I won't have to pay those part B premiums. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, one must have Part B in order to be accepted into a Medicare Advantage plan. You must also live in a service area. 
And last but not least to a lot of people, as of January 1, a person with end-stage renal disease, ESRD, will be able to enroll in the Medicare Advantage plan. Uh, service area means these are just that. There are certain Medicare Advantage plans delivered in each service area. In this case, in Maryland, the county serves as the service area. There will be certain plans offered in the Prince George's County service area. The plans, to some extent, may be the same in other counties. They may be different. Certainly, you know, the big challenges in terms of deciding about whether to join a Medicare Advantage plan is uh, what the premiums are they're offering, what the deductibles are typically there's not so much deductibles as there are coinsurance. Uh, it will also be dependent on the physicians in the network, the hospitals in the network, and what the formulary, which is part of the prescription drug issue, offers or doesn't offer. Uh, they're typically very similar to the different prescription drug plans offered on a standalone basis. Now, a really key point is the, again, physicians and network. So you may look at some of these Medicare Advantage plans and say, I like what I'm seeing. I think I'll join one. Uh, I will be able to go and continue to see Dr. Smith, correct? And the answer is maybe, maybe not. One would have to check and see if Dr. Smith has been incorporated as a network provider with that particular Medicare Advantage plan. Same thing with hospitals. You may say, well, I've been going to XYZ Hospital for many years. I'm happy with it. It may even be right in my community. Will I be able to continue to use the services at that hospital? The question will be, it depends, because each Medicare Advantage plan has different relationships with both physicians and hospitals in the network. So that is a big requirement in order to decide that you'd like to join a Medicare Advantage plan. Uh, in addition to that, you need to figure out on Medicare Advantage what are the costs out of pocket and what the value of the extra services might be. Every Medicare Advantage plan offers at a minimum dental vision and hearing. There are actually a number of different types of Medicare Advantage plans. There are regular Medicare Advantage plans, which would apply to most of us in the population. Uh, as I mentioned, people with end-stage renal disease can now switch into or join a Medicare Advantage plan. Uh, one great feature of Medicare Advantage plans is that they do not do what's called underwriting. They don't decide whether or not they want to accept you based on your health situation. This is unlike Medicare supplement plans, which I'll be talking about after Medicare Advantage, where it's possible, depending on the circumstances, they might be underwriting you and deciding whether they want to take you in as a new beneficiary. So you have regular Medicare Advantage plans, you have dual eligible plans, dual eligible meaning you are eligible for and enrolled in both Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, the great advantage to dual eligible plans are all the extra benefits they will provide to you. Uh, they are also called special needs plans. Those are at this point pretty much focused on those with either diabetes or congestive heart failure. There's also what's called institutional Medicare Advantage plans. Those aren't available to the public, but if you live in an assisted living or nursing home, there might be one or several plans in which you can participate. Several other things about Medicare Advantage plans, again, they're like a regular health plan, so there are out-of-pocket costs associated, a very significant factor about that. People need to be aware that the premium may be lower than a Medicare supplement plan. They, they range all over the lot, and I'll speak about that when you see the list 
of Medicare Advantage plans available in Prince George's County, but each of them have a schedule of copays up to an out-of-pocket maximum. So you don't join up for a Medicare Advantage plan and then say, I'm covered. You're covered to an extent. There's a uh, summary of benefits, again, that will list what the co-pay co-insurance responsibilities are when you use certain types of services. So unfortunately, you're in a Medicare Advantage plan. It's great, the premium's low. All of a sudden, something happens. You have need one of thousands of, of occurrences happen. Let's use, I, I have a stroke, and now I'm going to need to go to the hospital for five days to get treated before I can then be released back to my home. Uh, there is a schedule that says for the first five days, depending on which Medicare Advantage plan, they may differ a little bit. You know, one may say 275 insurance and one may be three and a quarter that's part of the shopping around uh, component of deciding whether you want to participate in the medicare advantage plan but you may be responsible for co-payments and co-insurance to an out-of-pocket maximum of sixty seven hundred dollars uh, for the year 2021 i'm just starting to look at the plans they're just coming out with this information and agents are now studying all of this to be ready to work with people on October 15th. Um, but that's more or less the case. Some, some plans, the out-of-pocket maxes may go to 7,000, some may go down to 6,000, but there's a significant out-of-pocket component. Another factor, you may use HSA funds to pay for Medicare premiums and copays. So for those, of them working either have their own HSA health savings account. If you're under 65, you can have an HSA account. A lot of the health insurance plans are HSA type plans. Uh, you've been contributing money into them. You could use that money then tax free. So that's a, a very important feature. One other thing a person can know, you can switch to a five-star rated Medicare Advantage plan anytime during the year. Other than that, switches can only be made through open enrollment. Uh, and and uh, so really, you know, there, there are a few conditions, but a five-star rated Medicare Advantage plan, actually the only one in the area is Kaiser. So when you're gonna try to join Kaiser, for instance, in this case, you don't have to wait uh, till different periods like open enrollment periods and annual enrollment periods, you could switch any month. The government tries to encourage people to use five-star plans. So here are select Medicare Advantage plans in Prince George's County for 2021. They've been in 20 as well, except for the last one on the list, uh, which is just beginning. So there's an Aetna Health Plan HMO. There's a Cigna Health Spring. University of Maryland does have a plan, but it is only for those who are dual eligible. Several years ago, somehow their uh, protocol switched up and they ended up only being able to offer dual eligible. Kaiser Health Plans is very prominent. They have a very good Medicare Advantage plan with two different choices, a basic and a, and a high high octane choice, so to speak. For additional money, it's significantly more, but then you get reduced co-insurance requirements and some add-on services as well. Uh, then you have, as I say, CAF First Medicare Advantage. You can a low option, a high option. CAF First is just beginning. A lot of people, of course, are familiar with CAF First. If you're under 65, and you've had employer insurance, or you're still working and have, have employer insurance through care first. And of course, if you're self-employed or not employed, but you have your own health insurance, care first really probably covers at least 80% of the market. So a lot of people are happy to see care first introducing that plan. 
So reasons to enroll, again, low premium, some as low as $0. Now, typically, those $0 plans are for dual eligible. Uh, no need to pay for a Medicare supplement or a Part D because your Part D prescription drug plan, which you would typically pay separate for if you are in a Medicare supplement or you haven't joined the supplement but you have A and B, you also want to have that Part D for prescription drug. With an MAPD, Medicare Advantage plan, they'll be combined. As I mentioned, there's a number of add-on services and benefits. Dental, vision, and hearing are the basics. In regular Medicare Advantage plans, you'll definitely see some dental, vision, and hearing. Uh, the dental is of a basic nature. You're not going to join and then think you can get all your uh, periodontal work and endodontic work and root canals, et cetera, et cetera. They will give you a small amount to do basically preventative dentistry. Several of the plans do offer an option to be able to add additional dental coverage up to a certain amount so that you might be able to use that to help pay for some of those dental procedures I just discussed. Vision is basically an eye exam and a couple of hundred dollars toward a pair of glasses or lenses. Hearing is basically an exam, uh, but I must say hearing now, uh, when you get to your, uh, not special needs, but rather special needs dual eligible plans for people who are on Medicare and Medicaid, you could be receiving over-the-counter meds up to a certain amount. And last year it was $600, which is basically $50 a month to help you buy over-the-counter med medications and supplies at pharmacies, certain amount of visits via transportation to and from physician visits. Uh, a lot of them are now offering fitness benefits, and that's just for the general Medicare Advantage population as well, so people can get access to health clubs at a reduced or free rate. Uh, there are benefits to being involved in a managed care type program like Medicare Advantage. And for special needs, especially the benefits of medical management and coordinated care can be very valuable. They're gonna work hard to try and help you to keep your costs down. So for instance, if you have diabetes and you join one of these plans, they're gonna have an interdisciplinary team of professionals who are going to work together to try and help you to control your diabetes. So you may have a nutritionist, a therapist, a nurse coordinator, other specialty uh, people who will, again, work together to try and make sure your blood pressure is controlled and uh, other factors are being maximized to help you maintain wellness. So there are reasons not to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan. Again, in, in a lot of the plans, which are called HMO plans, you must select the physicians and hospitals in the network, period. You can't go out of network if you, know, you want to see an out-of-network physician. You're going to have 100% responsibility for pay. And you have to know that's not something you plan on doing before you enroll. Uh, PPO plans do allow use of other physicians at an additional cost. Uh, some people like that choice. You will pay for it. Most of the plans out there are HMO plans, unfortunately. Again, those are the best ways for them to control care and control costs. Now, this is different than, and you'll see when we get to the next slides about Medicare supplement. With a Medicare supplement, you can choose literally any physician and hospital. Uh, and for overseas, uh, you know, there are programs that even have a, something called AARP. Medicare supplement has something called a passport program to get care overseas. Uh, not only do you not get care overseas with the Medicare Advantage, you don't get care 
pretty much having a service area unless it's something that they can't handle themselves. So that's, that's definitely a big consideration. Again, I talk to a lot of people who may say, well, I spend, you know, three, four months a year in a different part of the country living with my daughter or we have a vacation home or whatever. Typically speaking, a Medicare Advantage plan will not be for you because that is out of your immediate service area network. Uh, as far as prescription drug plans, you have to assess those because there are formularies. You want to make sure the medications you take are within those formularies. Otherwise, the MAPD plan you're looking at may not work. And again, the big consideration, the reason not to enroll, uh, because you do face the possibility of, uh, again, not so much deductibles, but co-pays, co-insurance, uh, up to, depending on what the plan has, six to 7,000. If you buy a Medicare supplement plan, you pay your flat fee for the most part. If you have a full Medicare supplement plan, that will do it. You won't have all these out-of-pocket expenses. But they can be a little more expensive as well, and that's the reason. They also don't have the add-on services of a Medicare Advantage plan. So with that, it's a perfect segue into the next choice, which is Medicare Supplement. Now that is also known as Medigap. So sometimes people get confused and you see a lot of advertisements where they're saying, here we are, we're offering you a Medigap plan. Well, it is a Medicare supplement plan. You can look at it two ways. If you call it a supplement, it's because it supplements what original Medicare, parts A and B, uh, are offering. The way they name it as Medigap just says it's going to fill the gaps again. That Medicare A and B does not provide. So they are one and the same thing. Don't be confused by that. Medicare supplements or Medigap are sold by private insurance companies. Uh, and if I may digress just a minute, uh, in terms of the Medicare Advantage, one thing I should have added to my slide and did not is that they can be offered by insurance companies or by Medicare or medical delivery systems, just to understand as opposed to this, which is strictly private insurance companies. So for instance, Kaiser has a Medicare Advantage plan. Well, Kaiser isn't an insurance company, but they've developed a managed care insurance arm to be able to offer Medicare Advantage. University of Maryland, which offers dual eligible plans, is a healthcare delivery network, which again has gotten an insurance license to provide managed Medicare. With a Medicare supplement, it is sold strictly by private insurance companies. Now, AARP isn't really a private insurance company, as an example, but they coordinate and collaborate with United Healthcare, which is certainly a huge uh, insurer. And so one and the same, if you call and say, what is AARP offering? I'm going to send you something which says, well, here's AARP. It's really AARP United Healthcare. They have a uh, relationship to combine to offer this product. Um, so in any case, there are many insurance companies out there, many well-known names, uh, Aetna, Cigna, Mutual of Omaha. Trans America, uh, again, United Healthcare, and the list goes on and on. There's probably about 25 different companies that offer Medicare supplements. Uh, these Medicare supplements fill the gaps in original Medicare. As I said, the biggest gap is the Part B copay. So they will provide uh, that 20%, which is, of course, very important. It may not be a big deal if you go to a physician and it's a $100 cost. Part B pays 80 and they send you a bill for $20. Not a big deal. If you start getting into 
all of the services that are associated with Part B, which we went through last week, the 20% can add up dramatically. Certainly one thing we talked about last week was, quote, observation costs in a hospital. They deem you to be in an observation unit either as part of the emergency room or a separate unit down the hall. You're not considered an acting inpatient. You're not considered as being hospitalized. Therefore, you're an outpatient. Part B applies to you. So you're in an observation unit. They run a bunch of tests. They keep you overnight, even though you're not an inpatient. The bill's five or ten thousand dollars. You're going to be billed for twenty percent of that, unless you have a Medicare supplement plan. So it's a very valuable coverage. Uh, the big thing about Medicare supplements, you'll see this often advertised. The main advertiser of such plans is AARP. Uh, I certainly see a lot of those on my television as they, they try and emphasize when the couple in the end is talking to each other, well, hey, this is great. We'll have freedom of choice. We can go to any doctor. We can go to any hospital. Uh, well, again, Part A uh, is covered hospitalization through the government Part A program. But in terms of Medicare supplement, it's absolutely right. You do have freedom of choice. You can go to any Medicare physician as opposed to having a network restriction, as I mentioned, for Medicare Advantage. The predominant types of plans are simply age-attained. And then there's another example, which is AARP has their own pricing plan. Uh, it, it's, uh, I really don't want to say anything negative, but some people may get confused with it. They'll give you a price, and then they'll say this price will decrease uh, because they show you a discounted uh, chart, which shows you're going to get a 3% discount each year for 10 years. But that doesn't mean you're going to pay less. It just means they're going to discount that price. But the price thing goes to annual price increases. You see, you're ending up paying more either way. So be aware of that. that age of 10 simply means whatever age you are. Your premium at age 70 is this. Your premium at age 71 is that. Those are the predominant modes of being charged. They're monthly premiums. Uh, so here's how Medicare supplement plans work. They offer comparison pricing. There are a number of letters. People get confused with this. Again, there's a lot of information, a lot of material you can read about Medicare supplement plans. Uh, Medicare.gov, which I discussed last week, is the best internet site, of course. Uh, there's a whole section, there's a tab you can click on for Medicare supplement plans, provides a lot of information. For those already on Medicare, the Medicare and your handbook has that same kind of information. Uh, there's information through the Maryland Insurance Administration about all the licensed Medicare supplement plans. But basically what happens is they are going to price the product by the letter of the plan that you are choosing. They're actually plans A through N, as in Nancy. Now, those letters are not to be confused with Medicare, the federal Medicare parts A and B. This is lettering related to, plan, to Medicare supplement plans. The most predominant plan that people have used in the past has been what's called plan F. I have a chart. I think it's in this presentation. If not, I can certainly share it. Very easy to go to the internet and say, you know, Medicare supplement payment schedule. Uh, but you will select a plan by the letter, and the plan will be priced based on that letter. So if you're dropping around, don't just call three insurance companies. Of course, feel free to call me. There are no charges, uh, insurance agents are paid by a commission by the insurance company, not by the person who is using the services. 
I try to point that out just because a lot of people will learn some things from me, not want to follow up because they're afraid of any fees or getting roped into buying something. And the truth is agents should be educational in nature like this, help you to figure out the best plan at the best price. And if they place that business for you, it costs you nothing. So if I were to tell you an AARP plan F is this much money, if you then turned around and called the AARP, you'd ask them what's the cost of plan F to me, It'd be the exact same thing. It's just an aside, but the point I was really trying to make is, so you get quotes on a plan F, so you call AARP, they say, well, the best plan at plan F, here's the cost at your age. You call Mutual of Omaha and say, I'm looking for a good price on a Medicare supplement plan. Be sure the prices that you're looking at are for the same plan letter. Um, Medicare put this process into place to be able to do comparative shopping. If you call me and say, I want a plan F, I want a plan G, whatever it is, I'm going to look at his five companies that offer a plan G. Here are their prices. And what you should know is that a plan G is a plan G. It will provide the exact same coverage regardless of which insurance company you use. Now, there may be other factors which lead you to decide which company to select. Some will simply want the lowest price. Maybe go for a few dollars more. The, the next plan offers some additional add-on types of features. I know AARP is priding themselves on offering all these additional benefits to people who buy an AARP plan. I just happened to get off the phone with a woman I was helping on this very issue 15 minutes before this presentation. And I was saying, this particular company, in this case, it was Aetna, is charging $145 a month for Plan G, and AARP was charging $149. I said, you want the best price available out of the companies that I offer, and that's multiple number of high-quality companies, $145. You want to pay $4 more? Here's what you get by going with this plan. Here's the, quote, add-on, so to speak. So those things you have to think about as well. You also don't want a company that's rated poorly. There's a lot of companies that are rated financially, R-A-T-E-D, rated. And of course, you don't want a bargain basement company that only started offering this two years ago. A uh, very small company with a B minus financial rating. Uh, you know, what are the chances they'll be in existence, or what are the chances they're going to get you in and then try to raise your rate by 20% instead of by 5%? So one needs to be aware of that. Uh, anyway, so there are different plans. The F's and the G's are the fullest. Uh, there's a plan N, which will give you a, a very good price for uh, some out-of-pocket responsibility, and so on. You have to de determine exactly what level of coverage you'd like. Some products, and I highly recommend these to people in a little bit higher age range, the premiums are, are very inexpensive, remarkably so. Uh, they offer what's called high deductible plans. Uh, by doing that, a person is taking responsibility for the first $2,340 out of pocket. Sounds like a lot, but given the uh, break that you're getting on the premium, and then if you compare that to the fact that you could spend up to $6,700 out of pocket for a Medicare Advantage plan should something happen. There's definitely something attractive about high deductible Medicare supplement plans. So uh, that is something very important for people just signing up for Medicare now. There's no longer the plan F. F was the most popular plan. 
is now a plan G for those who turn 65 uh, after January 1, 2020. Uh, the only thing that does not cover that plan F did was a $197 Part B deductible. First 197 you had to pay out of pocket. But the point on this slide is that if the cost for the monthly premiums is less than F by $17 or more, that's fine because the 17 a month, you know, pretty much comes up to like 190. Uh, so there's no, no difference. So if I'm telling you that the plan F now, if you can get a plan F, if you've been on Medicare before January 2020, you can still get a plan F. But it might be, let's say it's $350 more in premium, $30 more a month. Well, would you rather have it? you know, the 360 in premium extra, and then it will cover that 197 deductible. So it's a choice, but I think the plan G is a great. And uh, there are also several of the plans offer coverage for things like balance billing for non-participating physicians, a little complicated to get into in this brief presentation. I could certainly provide more information to anyone who'd like to uh, contact me, but basically there's balance billing for doctors who are deemed to be non-participating Medicare physicians. They take Medicare, but it's a different status, and they can then bill up to 15% more. So with a few of these supplement plans, they will cover balance billing and some, some better coverage on the foreign travel emergency coverage if you're someone who travels. Uh, there's a matrix. This isn't the greatest. I need to, to uh, really substitute a new one in here, probably for the next presentation. But this is a chart across the top. You see A through N. And then you read down the, to the left. It will tell you all of the different components of coverage that you get by having a Medigap plan. Something that's often overlooked is if someone has Medicare A and B, what's even A, which is hospital coverage, the deductible is $1,408. You go to the hospital, you're going to have to pay the first $1,408. With most Medigap plans, they will cover that Part A deductible. You can see that as you go down the left column. So just there, you're saving $1,400 as a part of paying a premium for Medigap coverage. So I think it's, it's great coverage to have, very valuable. So again, additional facts about Medicare supplement. It does not cover prescription drugs. So it's not like an MAPD, Medicare Advantage Prescription Drug. This is only going to cover the medical component. So if people are getting a Medicare supplement, they also get, have to get a prescription drug plan, what we call a standalone prescription drug plan. Again, we discussed that last week. You know, multiple companies offering many different plans. Uh, I talked a little bit about the excess charges and travel emergency. Uh, also, again, listed some of those other components that were down the left-hand column. Uh, including coverage for pints of blood, skilled nursing facility coverage, days 21 through 100, which if you look at it, that's by having a, a Medigap plan, if you had to be in the hospital up to 100 days, first 20 days, as you recall from last week, covered by Medicare, as long as there was a three-day prior hospitalization, 21 through 100, there are co-pays. Uh, with a Medicare supplement plan, it would cover those 79 days worth of about 14,000 worth of care. Uh, Medicare supplement plans also cover hospice care, as do Medicare Advantage plans. Hospice care is provided both in the home and on an inpatient basis. The focus really is on home hospice. Now there's a third new uh, product. It's called the Medicare Savings Account. Very few people have heard about it in this region. 
hasn't been out that many years, but it was only introduced into the DC area uh, last year. So this is the next iteration of Medicare saving accounts available as of January 2021. So that's yet another option for people. I know this is getting a little overwhelming. And uh, I try my best to make this as simple as possible, and yet there's still so much more to consider. So one truly has to line up basically all of the different options and figure out which is best for them. The attractiveness of a Medicare savings account is that there's a zero dollar premium. Again, there are no network restrictions like the Medicare supplements. Uh, now the most amazing part of this, which you know still really astounds me, is that an insurance agent is Medicare will actually place money into an account, into a Medicare savings account for you. Right? And that money can be used to pay for IRS through medical expenses, even can cover some insurance premium costs. There are two options in this upcoming year as they evolve into the Medicare savings account business. So once your initial dollars, be they the two choices are pay the deposit 2,000 or 3,000. You can use that for IRS approved Medicare, medical expenses again, A and B kinds of expenses. There's a member responsibility of either 3,000 or 5,000, uh, which is actually less than the amount of out-of-pocket maximums if you take a Medicare Advantage plan. Then you reach the deductible amount after which you fully cover. I know it's difficult to totally grasp this, but for anyone who is interested in this type of plan, which I think has some real value, uh, you certainly contact me. I will provide you with the information. Uh, Medicare savings accounts do not include prescription drug, again, like the Medicare Advantage plans do. So you do need to enroll in a standalone prescription drug plan. Uh, they also offer $250 in gift cards so to, to motivate people to do certain things which will help them to maintain good health. That includes taking a physical and doing certain health screenings. So it seems to be a very attractive alternative for people. And of course, if you're relatively healthy, uh, if you are relatively healthy, I mean, you, you often look at a Medicare Advantage if it has a low premium as opposed to our uh, Medi Medicare supplement plan. This likewise, they're giving you $2,000 to pay for medical care, $2,000 or $3,000. If you're lucky, you're, you're in pretty good health. Let's say you don't exceed that. Uh, you might not even use it up. You get to keep that in the account for future use. It mirrors what was we talked about briefly before, mirrors the health savings account for those people under the age of 65. So that's uh, the, the third option. So again, this is a little bit duplicative, but I tried to summarize because this is a lot of information. Uh, what kind of choices must, must we make? Certainly the price, what are the premiums? What are the values of the add-ons? Premiums differ. Uh, no premium in the Medicare savings plan. Uh, supplement plans, basically anywhere from 120 to 170, depending on your age for a full plan. Um, and then of course, Medicare Advantage really uh, goes all over the lot. Several of the plans I referred to have premiums in the 30 to $35 range, very, very attractive. Several of the other Medicare Advantage plans are in the 100 to 150 range. They have some different add-ons that they think provide value. For instance, the, the uh, Medicare Advantage plan in the $150 range offers $3,000 of dental. So for people who know they have some more significant dental issues to address, 
they may be willing to pay a little bit more in premium to address those dental uh, concerns and those dental costs that you know you're going to be facing. Uh, you know, what are your potential for out-of-pocket costs with any of them? Again, the issue of network versus non-network responsibilities. Uh, interest and need for additional services. Again, a lot of people are attracted to the dental vision hearing fitness package that's offered through a Medicare Advantage plan. So they're willing to go Medicare Advantage for those add-ons, uh, whereas other people are less concerned about that. Well, what happens if I have a Medicare supplement? If I don't join a Medicare Advantage plan, I'm not going to have dental coverage. Well, there's an answer to that, and that is you can buy a Medicare supplement, and you can buy a freestanding dental plan. There are insurance companies that offer both dental and vision plans that aren't associated with these Medicare Advantage programs. So that shouldn't be the only criterion upon which one which decides to join Medicare Advantage. On the other hand, it's nice to know you can probably get about $500 of preventative dental few hundred dollars towards, towards glasses, which is a vision benefit. As I mentioned, if you're getting into the world of dual eligible, uh, then you know, you're talking about much more significant add-on services, even including hearing aids, or at least some assistance with, with buying hearing aids, and again, over-the-counter. Um, medications that you can purchase through vouchers. Again, a key component is figuring out, uh, oh, I like this Medicare Advantage plan, but make sure you know which prescription drug formula they're using and if your medications are in that formula. Uh, so really, there are a range of choices for beneficiaries to take. Uh, it can be a bit overwhelming. That's why uh, Greenbelt has, has been good enough uh, and forward thinking enough to put this presentation together to help people sort through this. There's a lot more information uh, where this comes from. But, you know, basically summing up, a Medicare beneficiary could just have A and B. You don't have to have Part D. We talked about Part D last week but it's certainly advisable to do so and the premiums are really pretty reasonable. So you might get A, B, and D. You may get A and B and D and add the Medicare supplement. Uh, you may like the Medicare Advantage plan for the reasons we've spoken about. You cannot have both a Medicare Advantage and a Medicare supplement, but you can buy a hospital indemnity plan which I mentioned I would talk about at the end of the presentation. So you're concerned about, wow, I could be facing out-of-pocket costs if something significant happens to me, uh, especially if I need some hospitalization and some follow-up care. Is there a plan to, which almost basically supplements what I'm buying in a Medicare Advantage plan? Well, again, you can't buy a Medicare supplement, but you can buy a hospital indemnity plan that will provide some cash payouts to help you pay for some of the out-of-pocket costs. And then lastly, I try to point this out because I often get questions after presentations and realize, oh, I didn't address the whole issue of retiree health plans and its relationship to Medicare. And basically talk with a lot of people in this region who are county, state, or federal uh, government employees, they may have retiree health plans. And they, they may be very good plans that are called creditable. We talked a lot about the term creditable uh, last week in terms of the coverage being as good as what a Medicare coverage would be. And if you have a good retiree health plan uh, plus Medicare A, you may not need to buy a supplement or the, the retired health plan will in effect be like a Medicare supplement. 
And you may also not need to buy a Part D if you have creditable prescription drug coverage through your retiree health plan. But you do need to understand that you should talk to the plan administrator because there are a lot of different programs out here, again, county, state, federal, many, many programs of retiree health. They come in at different levels. They come in with different premium responsibilities for the retiree. Some are low option, some are high option, some have, diff have different co-insurance uh, responsibilities than others. So you want to not just take it for granted, well, I have a retiree health plan, I'm good. You want to at least do yourself the favor of comparing that to these other types of Medicare coverages that I've just presented to make sure that you are better off staying with the retiree plan you have. In many, many cases, people have very good retiree health programs. And in that case, you certainly don't want to switch a thing. Uh, there are other sources of detailed information. We've talked about Medicare.gov. There's also the Centers for Medicare Medicaid Services website, CMS.gov. Uh, great, another great source of information is, of course, through the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, two major documents, one we talked about, Medicare and you, they update that every year. I've already received, and anyone already on Medicare should have just recently received their 2021 edition. It's also a document called Choosing a Medigap Policy. Now, of course, Medicare and you as a whole chapter about Medigap slash Medicare supplement as well, which is probably more than enough information. Uh, National Association of Insurance Commissioners, NAAC, also has you know, some very good material through their Medi Medicare supplement publications. There's multiple other sites and sources of information. The Medicare Rights Center is extremely useful as well as others. So with that, uh, I come to the end of the second part of this presentation. I hope it's been helpful. I know there, again, it's a great deal of information. Uh, you can certainly feel free to email me or call me uh, for additional information. Again, here's other sources to try and get clarification about group health plans, public employers, uh, there's a Medicare enrollment number, issues about COBRA and Medicare, which we discussed at least briefly last week. So there's dementia-friendly information, which Sharon is going to be speaking about. And then at the end, I'll just point this out before I turn it back to Sharon. Uh, this is information uh, about how to contact me, how to learn more about what I offer. And as I mentioned, I'm always happy to provide information to people. There are no fees, no obligation. You can certainly feel free to call me to try to get a little more clarification about these programs or to give me a particular situation you're in and say, you know, what's your thoughts? What's your advice? I'm happy to try and help people out to make sure that they are protected in this very vital area of insurance. I appreciate your time, and uh, now I will turn it back. Thanks very much. Okay, thanks so much, Mark, for the presentation and taking time out to bring this information that is, uh, you know, very vital and very much needed to our, um, our caregivers and listeners. Um, so just a couple of slides I wanted to touch on um, that are included in the presentation um, are the dementia-friendly um, North County, and I'm Sharon Johnson. I'm one of the co-leads um, of the uh, Dementia-Friendly America Prince George's County Northern Sector, and um, we have a couple of um, events that we um, have on our schedule. So every first Monday of the month, we have um, Memory Screening Mondays and um, it's free, it's open to the community. 
And um, if you're interested, just uh, give us a call and we'll get you signed up. We have our virtual support group. We have our caregiver support group on the first and third Wednesdays. And then we have our social distancing, distancing support group on the first and third um, Thursdays. I'm sorry, the other one is the first and third Wednesdays. And then we have our monthly newsletter that we email out. If you're interested in um, being added to the list, listserv, please uh, either email me or give me a call and we can get you added to the listserv. And finally, we have our YouTube page. So you heard Mark mention that this is part two of the Medicare A, B, and D um, presentation series. And so part one has been uploaded to our YouTube channel. If you would uh, check out Dementia Friendly America Northern North County, you'll find that first part there. Um, the other slide that we have here, um, as far as dementia friendly um, resources, um, I'll just go quickly. We have the dementia, we have the, sorry, the Prince George's County, Maryland Area Agency on Aging. Um, they provide a wealth of information. If you have questions about really anything as a caregiver, you can call us, of course, but they are a great resource for the entire uh, county of Prince George's. Um, there's also um, eldercare.gov. Um, if you're not in Prince George's County, you can um, contact your local area agency on aging. Um, the La National Institute of Health, they have um, lots of information, clinical trials, and um, also the CDC provides great, great information. So um, just a few resources that we like to provide to our listeners. Um, and uh, so again, uh, we thank Mark for taking uh, time to present and um, we ask you all, uh, again, if you uh, have any questions to Mark, you reach out to him uh, directly. And we look forward to the next presentation. Take care and have a good one. The DFA Northern Prince George's County, Maryland YouTube channel is made available by funding from Prince George's County Government and the Department of Family Services. All published materials are for educational purposes only and to give viewers a general information and understanding of available programs and services, not to provide specific advice or to sell products. By watching and using the educational videos, you understand that there is no client-provider relationship between you and those affiliated with DFA Northern Prince George's County, Maryland and Prince George's County Government. Information provided should not be a substitute for licensed professional advice.